if you could um, give us a sense of what it was like a year ago when, when everything started, what, what was that first week, that first month like for, for you and your office? Um, the first month was, was complicated because there were no clear directions. There was um, there was disagreement on how anything should go. What there was was um, a need to change whatever it was everybody was doing, and um, and a lot of calls to shut down. We were asked several times, the building commission, shut the building. I'd like to, but I don't have that kind of authority. So what we did in the building commission, my, my small staff, 22 people, um, we organized like a military operation, which won't surprise me. Uh, we broke the staff into two parts. And so that everybody was backed up. Um, and half the staff worked two weeks from home and half worked in the building. We modified that just a little bit to make sure we had the right people in the right place. Yeah, but everybody was available for callback. So if we had a surge and needed some, some people, if we had something break, um, you know, working from home is great, but you can't fix a broken pipe from home. If we ever figure out how to do that, we're going to do that. But we can't. So, so we organized it along those lines and made sure that, that we had that covered. Then the next thing that came up was how do we deal with court cases? And the courts actually drove what was happening in the rest of the building. The city offices and the county offices, the mayor and the county board and the other elected officials made some decisions after a while on what they were going to do with their office staffs and how they were going to interact with the public. Um, there was a little hit and miss in the beginning, but began to sort of sort itself out towards, towards the middle part of April. In the meantime, um, the judges, city prosecutor, Matt Cousy was great to lead uh, and try to figure out what do we do we got all these people coming to court we got prisoners coming over from the jail we have a ton of cases civil cases all being heard we're not doing a whole lot about social distancing here we're trying to but masks weren't in at the time that wasn't considered a protocol and we had a lot of people coming and going in the building and, and buildings and it became a problem and, uh, and finally the, the decision was made to curtail uh, court cases yet uh, the buildings were still not closed. Um, district court, county court were still hearing some cases. Protection orders were still being issued. So people were still coming to the door needing access. So in conversations with the presiding judges, you know, figure out some ground rules. How are we going to do this? Who's going to come up to see you? How are you, you know, how we control it? And so we had touch base with the sheriff and said, how do, want, how do you want to do this? And of course, the first reaction is we don't have the manpower to be escorts for everybody. So we've got that. Uh, in the meantime, this building was is not secure. It wasn't at the time. So now we have to reroute everybody and install some some um, temporary security at the Farnham entrance to the city county building. Uh, and that freed up some building security and security people in a connector building. Uh, when and then we closed three of the other four entrances and exits to the building, uh, and then implemented some procedures about how to get people in and out who actually had need for the services being offered by not only the courts, but the other city and county offices in the building. How do you get person X from, from the front door to where they're supposed to get to, make sure they just get there and then bring them back down and get them out without infecting the whole place? Because the question of, can you, can you check temperatures at the door? We weighed that and said, no, we're not medical professionals. We're not going to do that. Um, we're not going to do tests. We're not going to do that. So we figured that out by appointment. You had an appointment with the planning department, and they were willing to see you. You could come. We call the planning department. They'd come down, escort you, go to the planning department. Better yet, the planning department said, here, we'll give you this, literally, a box, right? Put your plans in there, put your name and address on it. Tell us it's here, we'll come get it. Won't even see you. And then we had to make sure that everybody who was involved in this welcoming process had the proper PPE. Um, we had some. 
In fact, we gave most of our emergency storage to the health department because they didn't have much. And so we did. And then we went out and hit the markets early and got gloves and masks, even though we didn't know we were supposed to have them. We got them anyway. And, and we got just, we cornered the market on hand sanitizer uh, and made sure we had it. We shared it around with the, with the city and county offices as well as our own, but we made sure we had ours because we knew we were going to get people coming in out of the building and we had to protect the folks who were here. The first element is make sure everybody was safe. My staff first because I'm selfish and and then everybody who who, who is associated with that. So that changed a lot of procedures and where we didn't have security, now we did, where we didn't have open doors, now we do, where we have didn't have locked doors, now we do, and everything kind of changed. And then we had to organize around that to make sure that the city and county government continued to function in some way. And that what court facilities were operational actually were able to do that. So some courts, that meant instead of having one courtroom to have a hearing, now you needed two. Uh, the good news was we didn't have to worry about jury selection because that's a problem. That came later. Um, and then there was all the tech stuff that came with that. We didn't do too much of that. The courts did it on their own, but we managed a lot of the contractors that did that. We found the vendors or helped find them, and we, we helped coordinate with all the various agencies in this building have to plug in. It's just, you just can't set up a camera and be beyond the air going through our network and coordinate nationally over government with 19 different agencies and make sure everybody's on track. So our folks did that. Our contract administrator handled that. She was remarkable. Patience of Joe, and very smart, good. And so that, that was the early stages of trying to get organized and figure out what's going on. And, and probably our vision was terrible because our, our outlook was out like 90 days. It's not going to last thing longer than that. Well, as we went through it and honed it and got better at it, and it became obvious that this is a long-term deal, we modified what we were doing. And then along came the summertime, uh, and the doors sort of opened, particularly on the courts. Uh, the other offices remained partially opened or by appointment only, or we found out we could do a lot of things online. Not only Zoom and Meets and all that other stuff that we couldn't even spell a year ago, um, but but there were a lot of things that couldn't be done on the website by adding forms and people could do things without actually having to be here. And a lot of work from home things that we had never tried before suddenly worked. And that's that's not us, that's everybody who, who it's all my tenants, right? And they figured out how to do these things relatively efficiently and that got better over time so that reduced the need for, for non-judicial things to take place in, in, the, in the government that didn't necessarily involve coming into the building. So we're able to spend a lot more time focusing on what do we do now as the courts begin to expand uh, their operations. And so the time ran out on the, you know, the no trial. Nobody's coming into the courthouse. Uh, suddenly they did. And oh yeah, eviction notices started up again. That's a county court issue. And working with the county court administrator, we said, you know, we have, you know, we'll try it. So we had the first call on that, was like a cattle call. Um, six foot separation, um, trying to keep people relatively calm in a situation where they don't want to be here anyway. Um, sheriff's folks did a great job and just, sorry about that, in, in keeping everybody relatively calm. Um, and then we figured out a way to space them out in, in the city county building and ultimately with uh, Ron Mertau's really good eye and cooperation with county court, move everything over to the Hall of Justice and turn the rotunda into a theater. Um, when we first laid that out and took a picture of it from the third floor, I mean, my folks looked at that. Chief facilities manager, who has uh, got a really good eye for that stuff, said, you're, you're kidding, right? Um, 
Then we had to go talk to the fire marshal and make sure we actually had an exit and people could move through. We made a few adjustments to that and then had it pretty well set. Opened the doors and lo and behold, everybody's basement actually worked, but for the noise. Right. Um, the noise is a problem. It's like a bowling alley. And there wasn't a whole lot we could do about that. And, and I think initially, the courts didn't like it, but they kind of got used to it and sort of went away. Um, but then we got in to the summertime and we had jury calls. Um, the legislative chamber is the single largest gathering point. But six feet of distance was part of the rule that came out of the Chief Justice's direction on how to do this. So it's a problem. We got overflow. And the first one, <laughs> the first one we had people sitting in the old lunchroom, we had people sitting down on the Harney Street level. Uh, we had people everywhere scattered throughout this building. Um, it wasn't quite a disaster, but it was close. It was, it was pretty disorganized. Because in the meantime, we're also doing Secure the complex, that's what we call the project, where where we implemented securing um, entrance security for the city county building. Uh, after 20 years, we thought it was probably about time we got approval to do that. So that, that project was going on, and, and it was a build on the fly project. We didn't have time to design it with an architect and do measurements and all that stuff. So we were kind of setting up modules and facades to say, what? Well, how will this work here? And we're going to try it for a while. And that works. We have people scattered every place where we're trying to entertain 100 jurors who also didn't want to be here and trying to figure out who's going to give me the disease while I'm here. Um, sorted that out and got it figured out. But it became really obvious as we got into the fall, once we got past the second wave and got into the fall, and now we're going to you know, take care of this stack of cases that are lining up and, and people's constitutional rights are on the verge of being trampled. With many conversations with the district court and county court, we got a lot of cases, we gotta clear them. So what can you do to help us? Legislative chamber is used more for more than is used more than just for the for the uh, city council and the county board. There are I think 30 or 40 different meetings that are held in that place. Uh, in, in the course of a month by various committees and agencies who want to use it. They need the space they, they like to set up. It was the only space that connected with Cox Cable so people could watch it on Channel 22. If you had uh, people with disabilities committee, by the way, that's the that was their leaky. That was the place. It was the only one that connected at the time. There was no other way to get there. So there was all that demand. In the meantime, the courts needed more of it, and actually they needed even more of that as they looked at the stack of jury cases. What can you do? Well, the county owns the buildings across the street pretty vacant. We bought them as part of a juvenile justice expansion that we were doing. And uh, so we met with the public properties and with the courts and said, can you find a way? And uh, once they said yes, we got out of it. <laughs> and said, here, go forth and conquer. And they did a great job. So Jerry Leahy and his gang, uh, public properties people, did a super job of converting the old United Way building, then the OHA building same building, different names, of converting a couple of floors there to make that more than adequate for the second round on, on jury selection. Um, there were some security concerns. Jurors people solved those. And for the most part, I think, worked very well and, and still is. And, uh, and that helped us a lot. So what else did we do? In the meantime, we're looking at the infrastructure for the facility. And uh, long story short is we took about $10 million of the CARES Act money, uh, upgraded the entire HVAC system for the Hall of Justice and for this building, installed new filters, UV lights, um, changed the air handling unit operation considerably to make sure that, that we did it right, um, made some other changes in how we, how we clean the building constantly. Um, we spray this thing, every office gets sprayed once a week with a high grade disinfectant that also kills the coronavirus and COVID-19 in particular. Uh, where we have a case 
in the building. Anybody has a case reported to us um, with the permission of the person who, who occupies the space, we send our folks in with what we call level three cleaning, which is really a high power, deep cleaning agent. If it's alive, it won't be when, when they leave. Uh, and they wear PPE when they go in. It's, it's very important. It looks like people from Mars. And, and within two hours, uh, uh, papers, papers curl. I was right? gonna ask, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> papers curl. I leave it there to remind me. Monday, I gotta get my coffee cup for what. Um, papers curl and, and things are, are cleaned up. Do that. We had additional um, day porters on staff who went around every floor on a continuing basis, kind of like painting a bridge and, and wiping down common touch areas. Um, in the beginning, we serviced the legislative chamber and had somebody there wiping down the podium and the microphones. We changed that. Now we changed the covers on the mics and, uh, and people who were occupying the chamber. Wiped out the lectern if it's necessary. Figured out we didn't need to be either cut the cost a little bit. So we did all of those things and and um, kept our sanity along with it. Um, we learned a lot. We learned about what, what wasn't necessary to do. We uh, we provided uh, specialized uh, sanitizing, self sanitizing buttons on every elevator and touch surface, both in this building and in the hall of justice. Pretty unique. Took us a little while to search those out. We got a lead on it from one of my friends in the building industry that services the uh, the doctors' buildings that uh, Nebraska Medicine does, and also Methodist Hospital. They have them in some of their facilities. That's where I first saw them. You have to change it out or, or put a new one. Change on. them out every ninety days. Mm -hmm. Good for ninety days. So we keep track of that. Relatively low cost compared to some other things that are on the market. And they actually work. We ran them by the health department and said, here's what they're using. What do you think? Oh, yeah, that's great. So we did that. It took us a little while to get them because they were, guess what, back order. That was a surprise. But we did get them, and now they're they're on both places. So we're constantly looking for ways to improve and, and do it. We hand out masks to everybody coming to the door who doesn't have one. We can't, even when there was a mandate, government buildings were excluded. And the courts were excluded from the very beginning. The, the direction was very clear. The Chief Justice, you cannot deny access to anyone who's coming here on court business just because they want the mask. Okay, so we didn't. But we offer them, the Andrew Security people offer them to everybody coming to the building if they want them, and we have them. And most people who left them in the car, do as I forgot, my dog ate it, um, take them without, without incident. Some don't, and so, so be it. So we've done those things, and we try to make sure everybody's the same. So that's a short recap. Um, we kind of think we've been doing business as usual. It's it's what we're supposed to do, is maintain the facility in a healthy and safe manner for our tenants and our visitors. Um, the report card isn't totally in yet, but as we reviewed the first year, we think not bad. Some bumps along the way, some things we wish we'd done differently, but for the most part, we think it's worked, worked fairly well. We're looking at May 1st to bring our staff back full time. There are a lot of things that didn't quite get done in just routine maintenance of the facility. Now we're picking up the old MUD building, it's now called the 1723 building. Um, we're picking up responsibility for that probably sometime around January. It's time to get folks back in to learn about those systems and see what they have to do. It takes some time to do that. We have some catch up with routine maintenance, they said, to do with things that kind of didn't get done, need to get done now. Uh, so, so we think it's it's proper. All of our people, the two exceptions, will be fully vaccinated by the end of May. They're all scheduled. They're old enough so they fit. And, and we think that'll, that'll help. Um, so that's, that's our story. It, it's impressive. It really is. Uh, I mean, saying it's business as usual and having all those things happen in a year that wouldn't happen otherwise is, is saying something. Um, this idea of these buildings being um, open to the public and accessible and 
something that really has existed for a long time. You see it down at the legislature too, right? The, the, the unicameral, the whole building, the state capitol, it's, it's very open, right? And I think that that's that's important and, and impressive in many ways. But now there's a, 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 there, there's a sense that you know just coming in and hanging out isn't as 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 big of a thing as it once was, right? I mean, you need to have business while you're here. Um, but really, anybody can be here now. There's not that minding or anything like that, right? I mean, if I have three different things, I don't have to make an appointment. I can just go to those offices, and the public is completely open to coming. Completely in the open to the public. Yeah. The same way it has been. Yeah. It comes with its own set of issues. Right. Um, always has. So those issues haven't changed. But uh, yeah, the, the difference is that a year ago, anybody could come and go carrying anything in the front door of, of the city county building. Um, since 9-11, we've been talking with our commissioners about doing something about that. Um, to say it met with mixed reviews would be an understatement. We didn't get support from either the commissioners or the tenants in sufficient numbers to do it. It was the idea of it's the people's building, they should be able to come and go, uh, nobody should be in their way, we shouldn't be going through purses, we shouldn't be checking briefcases. Um, it's in a level of acceptable risk. Now, that's a term we use around here a lot. Uh, we gauge everything we do relative to security based on that and that what is the level of acceptable risk because certain things you can't do i mean i've i've taken the tour before january 6th i've taken the tour with the chief of the capitol police of the capitol grounds now i don't have their budget okay um that's how they solved a lot of their problems uh after post 9 11 they threw money at it and put people in places to do hand checking where where they needed to delivery areas in the, in the capital office building, in the center office building, the, uh, the old Longworth, uh, um, loading docks, all those kinds of things. We can't do that. We'd like to, but when they showed everybody the bill, that wasn't going to happen. So, so within reason, what can we do to at least have a level of acceptable risk? That makes some sense. And we said to everybody who would listen, we think the bar is too low. And, and a lot of things happened over the 18, 19 years since we made all those things. And it came up every year. Every year at budget time, it was in there. And every year it got tossed. And one of my commissioners said to me one time, why do you keep bringing it back? I said, because then when when and if, heaven forbid, something happens, you're not going to look at me and say, hey, you never told us. So I'm telling you, this is the risk. The best experts in the business have told us this is what you ought to be doing or not doing. And now you know the decision is yours. You tell us what to do, we'll do it. We're very good at that. And so now you know. Well, when we finally put this on the table in 2018, I lose track of my years, in 2018, Mayor, the city council, the county board, and every county elected official said, well, yeah, it was like, we just thought of it. And we said, yes, we, that, that's a good idea. What's it going to cost? So we came back to the, to the, uh, to the sheriff who um, does our security for us by contract. And, uh, and we worked out an arrangement cussed and discussed it often, um, then sat with HDR to see, figure out how best to do it. We wanted at one time to keep the 19th Street entrance open, easy access to the parking garage. The cost of that was seven figures and that wasn't going to happen. So we eventually had to scrap that. I thought there would be a massive uproar. There wasn't. There was no pushback. They're like, oh, no, okay, we'll go the other way. Still a fighter exit. But so all of a sudden, for reasons I'm not 
quite sure. There were other incidents around the country. Um, it got people's attention. And I think they saw the need. On behalf of the Omaha Douglas Public Building Commission members and the staff of the commission, I want to thank the Bar Association for the award. It's much appreciated. We often don't get these kinds of things for doing the job that we are supposed to do. And if we did it in a way that satisfied the need to make sure everybody was safe in our facility, we really do appreciate the recognition. Thank you very much.